And here in this video, we're going to take a closer look at the angular momentum of an electron in the s orbital. Well, first of all, an angular momentum is simply a vector quantity where we have an object going around another object. That object has mass, it has velocity, and it is at a distance r away from the central point of the orbit. And so it turns out that the angular momentum typically is going to be equal to r cross p. It's the position vector multiply times the, mom the momentum vector, which is, of course, m times its velocity. And the direction of the angular momentum vector, when you take your fingers and you curl your fingers around the path of the orbit of the object, the thumb will point in the direction of the angular momentum vector, so we can see an angular momentum vector perpendicular to the plane of the orbit of the object. Now, in the Bohr atom, which this is actually a drawing of a Bohr atom, we have a single proton at the center in the nucleus, a single electron going around the nucleus, and of course in the Bohr atom we assume that the electron was simply going around in an orbital, orbital path just like a planet goes around the sun. Now, of course, we understand that it's no longer the case. What we understand is that there is a probability density function that defines where you are likely to find the electron. And if this is the nucleus of the hydrogen atom, we can find electrons somewhere in a spherical shelled region called the s orbital and it can be there in any different location going pretty well in any different direction with other words it's not going necessarily around in a circular path it can go just about in any path how do we know that well it turns out when we take the Schrodinger equation defining the wave pattern of an electron and we solve it for the case where the energy level, the principal quantum number is equal to 1, which is the innermost energy level of the atom, and L is equal to 0, which is the angular momentum quantum number that is associated with the s orbital, associated with the low energy state around the nucleus, and then m sub L also being 0, and, and that's not an effect right now since L is 0, we don't have, really have to worry about the m sub L quantum number. But it turns out that in quantum mechanics, at the very sub-small level, for example, the atomic level, we note that the angular momentum, the magnitude of the angular momentum vector is equal to L times, or the square root of L times L plus 1 times H bar. Now remember, H is equal to 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds, and H bar is simply h divided by 2 pi, which would be this number divided by 2 pi. Now h is that, that number that exists in nature that defines the quantum jumps that things can take in nature. So when energy goes up, it goes up in quantum, quantum jumps in terms of h and h bar. So we also know that the angular momentum belonging to an electron in an orbit around the nucleus has to be in quantum states associated with this h bar, the Planck's constant divided by 2 pi. Now, if L is equal to 0, so for this particular case, when L is equal to 0, L, when L is equal to 0, is equal to the square root of 0 times 0 plus 1 times h bar, which is simply equal to 0. In other words, what we discovered using these equations and solving Schrodinger equation, that the angular momentum of the electron going around the nucleus in the s orbital is equal to 0. Matter of fact, this would indicate that the angular momentum of any s orbital would be equal to zero. Why is that? Well, at first it doesn't seem to be possible because anything going around in circles should have some sort of angular momentum. But what's happening here is this determines that the electron is not going around in the s orbital in a circular path. It's, it's always going to be somewhere in a spherical shaped object, but it could go in any direction. And that is, the, that is determined by these two solutions of the Schrodinger equation. Notice in the theta direction and the phi direction there's only a dependency on a constant. There's no variable in these solutions. In other words, the electron can be moving in any direction at any time with equal probability and that is the case. If there was a slightly higher probability in one direction than another then it would spend more time in that direction and then you would have an angular momentum vector. But the fact is that it has an equal probability in all directions so that those angular momentum vectors that otherwise would exist would simply cancel each other out and the net angular momentum is therefore always zero. So there's no preferred direction for the motion of electron in an s orbital and therefore there's no angular momentum and therefore angular momentum is equal to zero which is defined by the angular momentum quantum number L being equal to zero indicates there's no angular momentum. 
And so even though it doesn't seem plausible at first, especially since we have in our mind the idea of the Bohr atom and electron going around in circles around the nucleus, it doesn't make little circles. It simply goes around in all which direction with equal probability, therefore no angular momentum. And that's the explanation of that.